All right, greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome. All right, today, you know, as usual, whenever you have uh, old vehicles, they're they're a challenge to work on, right? So we're going to make a, uh, a slide hammer using a. Uh, first off, the problem is I have a axle I need to pull out, and uh, it's a little stuck. So I got I'm going to make a slide hammer using some of these tools here. So I'm going to start with the whole process and give you the parts number, take the, uh, take any sort of like adventure out of this. See, all this can be acquired at a local home despot. And uh, what we have here is uh, just an Irwin uh, vice grips, vice grip. And uh, the size of this vice grip is, uh, let's see, it doesn't have a, yeah, it does have a part number, 10WR. So that's the one I have, and that one is, this is uh, roughly, looks, what are we looking at, mm, like nine, eight and a quarter inches, okay, so that's what we're going to use, alright, so here, this is how it starts, we're going to get something that fits into here, right, like a, a rod of some type threaded rod. That's what we're going to use, right? So the first process is getting a measurement of what this thread pitch is. So this is this is a, an American product made in China. Irwin, that is. So we're going to use a fractional thread gauge, right? And so you kind of you kind of take these thread gauges and you go like this. You're looking for a perfect fit. See how beautiful that looks. So get out of the shadow. Okay, now this has a number on it. It's hard to see, but it says uh, right there, fourteen. Right, that means it's. Uh, 14 of these in one inch. 14, 14 of these grooves in one inch, right? So that's how you know. The next thing you want to know is when you use the digital caliper, we need to figure out the thickness, the diameter of this. Right? So I'm going to put this in inches. And we have 0.430 thousandths of an inch, right? What does that look like? Well, that's going to be about 7 sixteenths. No, I'm sorry, not about. That is 7 sixteenths. Let's say you take this. You can see here. Point four, three five. So almost the same. Well, it is the same, but you know this is not a point four three. Okay. So that kind of gives you the rough idea that these are close in diameter, right? Well, actually, they are exact. The next thing we want to do is uh, so we have a thread pitch fourteen, and we have our diameter. Now, this will tell you a lot of information here. So let's take a look here. Here's our part number. It's a threaded rod, 7 sixteenths inch, right? Dash 14, that's 14 like we saw. 14 threads per inch. And this is uh, 36 inches in length, okay? And the part number here is uh, 6, oh that's going to be annoying, there you go, can you see, come on, alright, there you go, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 1, okay, 
Now, if you didn't have a thread pitch gauge like this, I highly recommend you get one. They are for metric and for fraction, fractional. You can just go like this. Take the bolt, right? If you don't have a thread pitch gauge like I showed you, you can go like this. And you can see for if they actually fit perfectly. If they slide perfectly together, that's how you know you have the right thread pitch. Okay, now this is colored green. So that's another thing that uh, it's uh, at Home Depot you can uh, tell. You want to use a uh, three feet because you need some room to, to slide. Okay, to generate some momentum. All right, so we got this part. Put that aside. Okay, the next thing we want is something, unless you are a machinist, right, you're gonna have to do some hackish thing like this. So I bought this hammer. And this is a four pound hammer. If I can get six, I probably would have, right? In an ideal world, I would drill a hole all the way through this right here. Right? Maybe I'll get a machinist to do it. But for now, we're going to go this way. We're going to cut that off, drill a hole through there, and put a bolt on it, right? All right, the next thing we're going to do is figure out which one of these is the closest in size to diameter. So let's figure that out. So what do we have? Let's see. Ooh, that's nice. All right. Seven sixteenths. We have our winner. So, what do we have here? Seven sixteenths. Let's save that set. Let's see if. Uh, See if this set has seven sixteenths. Perfect. Right here. Cool. All right. So now we're gonna. Almost forgot. Well, terrible me. All right. We need to get us a, a nut, right? So I bought this. 7 sixteenths inch by 14 coarse threaded gem nut. Now they didn't have bigger regular nuts, so we're just going to use those four gem nuts. And that part number is 3. Can you see? Um, 3, 1, 6. Two six six, okay. I just got these large washers, and they are they're useful for a lot of things. I usually use these to like pull on uh, wheel studs. So when I, you know when I have damaged wheel studs on cars, just kind of stack these up and screw them on, pull them in. So that's what we're going to use for all. Now in the perfect world, I would have gotten this hammer from like Craigslist or someplace like Facebook Marketplace, something used, you know, because you don't need a new hammer. But we don't have that. And, uh, well, like, we do have it, but I don't, I don't have time. So I'm not going to go that route. So what I ended up doing is just buying this, right? So this can be a pretty cheap project if you uh, if you don't mind shopping around and stuff and recycling things. Now listen, this is a one-timer. I'm hoping that this thing is all plastic too. What do you think? <laughs> all right, let's see what's going on. Don't forget your glasses. We're cutting this, right? Yeah, we are. All right, it's gonna happen. It's happening. All right. I think I need to plug in. Sorry about that. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. I don't know what 
the heck was inside of that, but it's gone. You see? Hmm. I'm really thinking I should have uh, checked uh, Home Depot's return policy. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so we have a drill top desk, uh, drill press, bench top <laughs> drill press. And uh, so I'm just kind of lined this up here. We gotta go all the way through. See, that kind of stops right there. That's the problem with these uh, bench top, sorry, <laughs> bench top drill presses. They don't exactly have a lot, a lot of depth in their cut. So, so I'm, someday I'm gonna get a floor drill press. That's the plan. If any of you have an extra one you want to send my way, I wouldn't complain. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to use that, something like that. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's see. I'm being super anal. Okay, don't forget your glasses. I gotta get a respirator. I have no idea what that particulate is going to do to me health wise. It's beginning to smell like Proposition 65. One second. Our respirator and glasses. Here we go. You ready? You ready? the heck is that right well so am I I've been cocaine faking wannabe I don't know what the heck that is if you know don't get the comment below that's pretty cool huh look at that don't go snorting I see little pieces of plastic wow this is interesting all right cool there you go Yeah. All right, so we're going to continue this drilling process. You can see uh, that it doesn't, it didn't make it all the way through. So what we're going to do, we have a sacrificial piece of wood and uh, let's the control bit and keep on drilling. All right, go get your respirator and your goggles.
not as centered as I wanted it to be, but see that. Yeah, I was should have. What could I have done better? It looks like the plastic mold in here. I just could have measured it better. That's all. I'm sorry. Could have just measured it better. All right. Well, that's that. Moving on. Wow. Okay, let's see what we got. So let's put this together. Yeah. Get a little bit more. You can see my glory. A little more like our glory. Look at that momentum directional object. That's amazing. Let's go ahead and test it. Yeah. <laughs> 